But anyway, next we'll go over the, the uh, door controls. We'll get to the circuit a little bit later. But here's the door controls. Now it's pretty elaborate. Basically we got four doors, so we have to duplicate the circuit four times. But first of all, when do we want the door to open? Now, if we come down here and we hit this button, the this green lamp came on, the elevator's moving, eventually this green lamp down here will come on. At that point, at the instant both those green lights come on, we want the door to open. So we have an AND gate. When this green is high and this green is high, the elevator door opens. So let's see what our colors are. We've got green and brown. So if we come over here, we will see a green and a brown right here. And this is the basic AND gate. So when the elevator arrives, this output goes high. You can see it right here. But here we have a pulse former. Now, pulse former puts out a pulse whenever it detects a low to high transition. So whenever the elevator arrived, this thing pulsed. It turned on the state cell. The state cell set to five seconds. It means the door is going to open for five seconds. Also have lamps here to tell us when the door is open. So let's do this one more time. You're gonna. I'll verify that that works. And so when this elevator arrives on the first floor, this red lamp right here will go on. First of all, you're going to see this output go high. Then you, this thing will put out a pulse. You won't see that, but you briefly saw it. Uh, but anyway, the door is open right now for five seconds. Then it will close. So this right here um, is a knock gate. Got one on all of them. Um, the knock gate inverts the logic because if you recall from the pistons, the pistons open the door when they get a low signal. So we have to invert our signal. So the state cell is going to come on and the knock gate is going to make sure the elevator door gets a low signal. And so that's going to turn on the door. So now this circuit's duplicated four times so that you can see it there. Now you're also going to notice this white wire is connected to all four circuits and here's the AND gate. Let me explain to you what this does. This is the open button inside the elevator. This is the circuit to make that work. So if you hit the open button, here's the receiver. When you hit the open button, this white wire is going to pulse. All four of these white wires are going to pulse. And they're going to the side of this AND gate. And so basically what happens is if the elevator, right now it's on the first floor, so this, this input's high. If with the open door button, this input would be high too. And this AND gate will um, turn on, or it will open the door too. So you can see we have two methods to open the door. The first method is the door, the elevator just arrives, the door opens. Second method is we hit the open door button and the door opens. Now, so that's very kind of straightforward too. So what am I going to show you next? Um, I will show you this. This is a, kind of elaborate too, a little difficult to explain, but this is the circuit for the call button. As you recall, I told you the call button had uh, to do different things depending on what floor the elevator was on. And so we have this right here. Now first, if you recall, we have a black, an orange, I'm sorry, a black, a brown, an orange, and a, and a magenta wire um, going to the buttons. And we see those over here. We got black, brown, orange, and magenta. So this circuit right here is going to register which button was pushed but if you notice we have receivers right here too these are actually wired to the optical sensors if you call over here these lamps right here these memory cells they're not telling you which floor the elevator is on they tell you the last floor the elevator was on well over here we actually have the circuit to um, the circuit actually needs to know the elevator is on the floor and so here's the reason. If the elevator's on that floor, it just needs to open the door. If the elevator is not on that floor, it, it needs to make the elevator move. So let me show you how this works. So this one is the one that's on right now. So if we were to hit the call button, let's see what happens. We have two AND gates right here. At any given time, only one of them's on because we're using a NOT gate. So when this one's high, this one's low. When this one's low, this one's high. So right now, since the elevator's on the first floor, this AND gate is the one that's going to route the signal through so if we hit the black black or if we hit the call button it's going to activate the black wire this is going to activate the signal passes through and it goes to frequency 41 frequency 41 is the open door button 
I'm sorry, it's over here. Or if you remember, there's frequency 41. So if we hit the call button, it opens the door. So basically the, the button inside the elevator uses this frequency and so does the button outside the elevator. And so next, what happens if the elevator is not on that floor? Well, we'll go over to the, this one right here. The elevator is not on, the, on floor two. So if we hit the call button, the brown wire pulses. This is the AND gate that's active. So uh, this right here is going to get the signal. Frequency 12 is going to get the signal. Frequency 12 is over here. It's going to set this uh, memory cell right here. You're going to switch to green. So if we actually hit the second floor call button, it'd be the same thing as doing this. And so now our elevator is moving. So once again, this, this circuit just determines what the call button does. It's, the call button needs to do two things, two different things, and this circuit makes that work. Next thing I'm going to show you, the um, bell circuit. The bell sounds whenever the elevator changes floors or whenever the door opens and closes. Now, this right here is, um, we actually cover this one first. First of all, this is right here, this is the circuit. Right here you see this magenta wire and these, these are pulse formers. These detect when the elevators arrived at a floor. So the instant this goes high, the pulse former pulses the purple line and it transmits on frequency 43. 43 is the note block. So if we were on the second floor and the elevator moves up and up and up and up and it gets to this floor, this line's going to go high, this puts out a pulse, the bell goes off. And so that's how we make the bell go off when the floor when the elevator moves. Now we also want the bell to go off when the elevator goes or when the door opens or closes. We do this we do this right here. Now these are XOR gates. XOR gates are special nor are special OR gates. A regular OR gate, if either input is high, the output is high. And in fact if both inputs are high, the output is still high. Well an XOR gate's a little bit different. When both inputs are high, the output goes low. So it actually creates a condition where any changes in the input causes a change in the output. So, for example, right now, um, if you remember this in logic is inverted, so the red, the green, the blue, and the yellow wire, they're connected to the same data bus as the door control, so um, they're all high right now. If, I, if any of these inputs change states, if the red, green, blue, or yellow change, um, one of these two outputs will change and here we have another XOR gate and this output will change too so if we hit if any of these doors open this line right here will transition now here we have our transition detector I've built this in many uh, tutorials so if you've seen some tutorials you're familiar with it but basically what it does is it's pulse formers and one side's inverted so at any time if the signal goes from low to high or high to low one of these two pulse formers will output a pulse and it goes to frequency 43 which is also the note block so this is the circuit to make the bell sound whenever the door opens and closes next we have the motor controls the motor controller now I'll save this for last this one's actually kinda complicated but uh, basically let me show you what happens um, here's an AND gate we won't get into this yet but basically this side input of the AND gate is on it allows the signal to pass through. Here's our actual timer. It's set for two seconds. Now I had to set that slow because it takes some time sometimes. This, this signal's pretty. This setup's pretty complicated, so we get a little lag. Sometimes we might, might miss a tick or something. So I just move the elevator slow to make sure that uh, all the circuitry has time to work. So that's why it takes 12 seconds between the floors. The, floor, the floors are six blocks apart. But anyway, let's go ahead and move the elevator to the fourth floor. And you're going to see that you're going to we're going to verify that the motor indeed does turn on. The up motor is now on. If we come down here, you can see this timer is moving because this line went high. The sand gate passed the signal, the knock gate inverts it, and timer switches on. Now, when it finally arrives, the timer will go off. We'll see that here in a second. If you watch, as soon as that light turns green, this timer will go off. I get them both in the frame. There you go, it switched off. And so this circuit right here, what's all this other stuff for? Well, this is for the emergency stop button. Frequency 42 
is wired to the emergency stop button inside the elevator. So if you hit the button inside the elevator, this is going to pulse. Now it's, it's going to a toggle latch. So the toggle latch is going to switch states whenever it receives a pulse. And it's going to turn this off and turn on frequency 44. Frequency 44 is the alarm. So let, let me actually go ahead and rip this out. Um, show it to you this way since I'm here. Imagine we hit the button. There we go. We can hear the alarm. As you can see, the output toggled. If we hit the button again, the emergency stop, the elevator starts back up. So you can see the left side, like I say, it's just the alarm, but here's what the right side does. Um, it controls this AND gate. Now, if you notice right here, there's another circuit right here. This is also an AND gate, so frequency 47 has to be high in order for this um, AND gate to pass the signal. So basically, we've got two conditions for the motors to go. First of all, the uh, emergency stop button has to be off. Let me put that back. It's bugging me. The emergency stop button has to be off and frequency 47 has to be high. Well, now, what is frequency 47? Frequency 47 is a, a circuit that detects whether the door is open. When the door is open, this line right here will go low and the motors cannot move. So that's this circuit right here. We have red, green, blue, and yellow. Once again, they're connected to the door logic. So um, when red, green, blue, or low are what they call active low, um, in other words, um, I forget what I just said, basically. Long tutorial, it's hard to do something this complicated without screwing up, but basically the normally the door controls or the doors are closed and they're put, putting, off, putting out a one so we can see the input of the knock gates. These are knock gates. They are off and so the knock gates are inverting the signal because we want, we want that to happen. So basically you can see the outputs of the, uh, the knock gates right here, 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 and here. Now all four doors are closed. Let's go. Um, <laughs> open the door. Now we're going to do that by just moving the elevator. So the elevator is moving. Um, when it arrives, the door will open for five seconds. So let's see what happens. Oh, I'm supposed to be over here. There we go. Blue door open. So this circuit uh, passed, passed the signal through. Now right here we have another OR gate. So this that's how you create a four input OR gate. Sometimes you need more than two inputs, so that's how I did it here. Um, so this OR gate right here, um, any door opens, this OR gate puts out a high. And we have a NOT gate, so as you can see right now, frequency 47 is high. If any door opens, uh, this, fre this uh, frequency will go low. And so basically, why do we have that? Well, here's the thing. If we get an elevator, uh, let's go back to the elevator. We're on the third floor, so let's go back and I'll show that to you. We hit the call button, the elevator opens. I'll wait just a second. Now normally what happens is if you hit a button, the elevator starts moving. Well, we don't want the elevator to move until the door closes. That's the purpose of that last circuit. So let's open the door and we'll hit the button to go to the second floor. The elevator is not moving right now. It will not start moving until the door closes. So now the elevator is moving. And by the way, if we hit the open button right now, the doors will not open anywhere because we're not on the floor. So like I said at the start, of the, I think I said at the start of the video, there's a lot of little things to make an elevator work you want to think about. But as you can see, this is very elaborate. Now, hopefully you found this uh, video helpful. If there's anything you're confused about or you have any questions, let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer. In fact, YouTubers encourage you to... Um, ask questions it helps their channel so if you want to know anything about how the circuit works just let me know ask ask a question and uh, don't forget to like this video it really helps it took me a week to build, build this so I'd appreciate it if you could show this video a little love but um, I actually could have made four regular tutorials in the time it took me to do this you know you can do those little bitty tutorials like the chicken farm chicken farm took me one day like three maybe four hours to build that this right here took the better part of a week probably 15 or 20 hours 
so hopefully this video will get a lot more views and likes if if this video isn't going to be any more successful than some of the smaller videos there's no reason to do these big videos but i really enjoyed making this and uh here's one thing i missed it in the comment somebody asked uh in a comment before but i actually have a degree from itt i graduated in 93 so i actually know all this digital stuff this is how stuff used to be done back in the day before you had microcontrollers for under a dollar um microprocessors and all that stuff dirt cheap used to do it this way like if you had an old digital watch like from the 1970s it, it used stuff like this so um, really enjoyed going to ITT there was a, an entire three months devoted to this stuff so it's actually been 20 years since I went there so I've forgotten a lot of this stuff but actually building stuff like this is really making me remember it it's kind of cool it's kind of fun getting back into it um, but I had something else I wanted to show you um, let me come over here this irritates irritates me to no end a lot of other people who do videos complain about this now I know a lot of videos on YouTube are crap but not all of them are crap a lot of people do take it and then you're just watching them chopping wood but then there's other guys like me who actually have I don't, I'm not trying to brag but quality content I'm, what I mean I'm not trying to brag about quality content is I mean I'm actually showing you how to do something. I'm not chopping wood. I'm not joking around horse playing with my 12 year old buddy. I'm actually got a helpful tutorial. So, anyway, let me show you something here. We're going to tarred pillar up. I'm going to show you how to get some quick, easy karma on Reddit. And the reason I'm showing you this is because this is what's irritating me. Crap like this will get more upvotes because it's a screenshot than an actual video. Like I say, not all videos are crap. But anyway, we're going to tarred pillar up the higher the better and we're just gonna drop a block of oil right there and let's see what happens here wow we got an instant geyser and so what people do I, I don't know they do this I think they do it but you saw how easy that was they'll just do that post the video say wow biggest oil geyser ever and and they'll instantly get 20 or 30 upvotes and you saw how long that took me and then how long would it take to make a screenshot and how long would it take to upload that screenshot and then you got other guys like me or an enigmius they'll build something that takes 15 20 or 30 hours to build and crap like this will get just as many if not more upvotes but by the way as a bonus if you want to if you were to do this I'm not saying you should I won't, I've never done it but if you want to do this crap like this, um, it's better to do it inside of a village or have a volcano in the background. You'll get a few more upvotes that way. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the point I'm making is that that crap irritates me. If you want to see quality content, give the good give the good stuff upvotes. Don't give it to the don't give it to the crappy crap stuff. I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know. I see it. I don't necessarily downvote it but I very seldomly give uh, upvotes to a screenshot you know there's another instance now I'm not saying this guy did this but you could just make this big elaborate thing this airship and claim it does all this crap it doesn't do and just take a screenshot and say check out my airship it mines or it throws nukes and that shit will get 75 or 100 upvotes and that crap irritates me too I'm not saying that's what the guy did, but I'm just saying if somebody wants some cheap karma, they could do crap like that. But as you can see this right here, I showed you how it works, and you can see that I put a lot of effort in this. So I'd appreciate your upvote. But I uh, appreciate you watching, and uh, I'm really enjoying this Red Power too. So if, if there's any more Red Power logic circuits you want to see me do, let me know. Um, something I can control. I get some suggestions for stuff for computer craft and all that. I, don't, I know very little about computer craft. I've watched some videos and I forget that stuff like 30 seconds later so anyway this is Grumpy Gamer we will see you next time I appreciate you watching